love our mobile devices, and nobody wants to be, uh, you know, dragging uh, the fiber optic cable uh, everywhere with them. So, uh, what's really, uh, you know, what's really obvious is we we have to look beyond photonic communication to, um, you know, to wireless communication, and to, you know, talk to us uh, about the challenge of having everything connected, not just our phones or our mids, but literally everything, almost all the devices we can imagine uh, in our universe, we're going to have to make very clever use of the, of the spectrum. And here to share his vision of that massively connected world is Dr. Jan Rabai from the University of California at Berkeley and the Donald O. Pedersen Distinguished Professor. Good morning. We're actually at a point that we see some major changes in the way we look at computing. Uh, the uh, concept of uh, actually fully distributed ubiquitous computing is really happening. And the main, one of the main forces behind that is really the wireless connectivity. Uh, wireless connectivity is one of those things that, if you look at Ray Kurzweil's description, one of those exponentials. Exponentials are happening, and they're really happening quite rapidly. A couple of us have this prediction that about 10 years from now, there will be about a thousand radios per person on A thousand per person? That's right. About a trillion radios. Well, I have to carry all of these radios. Oh no, they're going to be so small, they're going to be hidden in the environment. Every object will have some connectivity to it. And uh, this is all due to the fact that we have been progressing in information technology, as well as semiconductor technology. Just to give you an example here, I'll show you a little note. This is a little... Grab it. It's really small. Little wireless node. Has a radio in it, has a processor in it, has sensors in it, has power in it. It can be self-powered, uses about six microwatt of power in total. So this kind of technology advances, make it possible for us to really see the future of the Earth. So Jan, I knew you were gonna bring some of your radios. Okay. So I, I, I brought some of my radios here. Okay, so this is a radio. And I think I think this is you know what you were talking about part of your vision. This is what we call a, a WISP. This was developed by um, the Intel Seattle Research Lab, mm -hmm. uh, and this radio doesn't require a battery. Mm -hmm. It gets its power from the environment. It scavenges power, and when it gets enough charge, it wakes up and I'm sends out a signal. This one is solar. Uh oh, this dueling radio. My radio is smaller than your radio. <laughs> Anyhow. Good. So, but uh, obviously, this dream of having this trillion radios has some challenges to it. Uh, technology has made it impossible, but at the same time, we see some problems. Every one of you who works with wireless technology knows it's kind of unreliable. Uh, it goes in, you drop calls, all those kinds of things. And one of the main reasons behind that is, number one, spectrum is limited. If you put more and more devices down, you basically run the spectrum. Number two, energy is limited. Uh, you only have so much energy available. And number three is that uh, we have so many different standards around. Everything incompatible. So how are we going to make this thing to work? So it's clear to me that business as usual is not going to work. We really have to rethink the way we're going to deploy those networks. Actually, about a couple of months ago, there was a very interesting article in IEEE Proceedings by Peter Cochran, where he said, okay, if I would redesign my wireless network from scratch today, would I do it in the same way as I've done it before? And the answer is a resounding no. You will do it very differently. A lot of the decisions we have made are because of historical reasons, what we could do at that point in time. And so it's time for us to think about how would we rebuild our wireless networks in such a way that we can provide always on connectivity in an absolutely reliable way. These are the questions that we basically have to answer. Sounds like a big challenge. And there's some interesting ideas around. Um, here's an example of some of the technologies we're playing around with today. So today, Spectrum is a static commodity. It basically is signed by the FCC, and you either pay a couple of billion dollars for a couple of uh, 50 megahertz or something like that, or if you're lucky, you get it for free. So uh, the disadvantage of that is that a lot of the Spectrum is not utilized very well. It's empty. Nothing is happening. So it's available there for the taking. But the radios don't know it's there. That's exactly right. That's why we need to, need to re uh, revolutionize how we design radios, change the way our radios operate. So we have introduced this concept that I call connectivity brokerage. Make it into an economic term. Basically, trade spectrum dynamically, on the fly, based on needs, availability, and a set of rules, policies that are out there. So that's kind of the idea that we're pushing, connectivity brokerage. And in order to make that happen, we need to basically have two technology breakthroughs. Number one, we call cognitive radio, which I'll explain in a second. And the second one is collaboration. 
Those are the key concepts from a technology perspective. We believe that it's going to make connectivity brokerage and a lot more efficient usage of uh, wireless spectrum a lot more easy. So let's talk a little bit about cognitive radio. As I mentioned today, what you get, you go to the FCC, you get a chunk of spectrum, and you're stuck with that. And um, even if you're basically overflowing, saturation happens, you drop calls, all this kind of thing, you're stuck. Now, if I could make an intelligent radio that sniffs around, senses the environment, and figures out what bands are available, what frequency channels are available, I could dynamically move my frequency and move to other bands, or I change my power, or I do some other things, move around in such a way that we have a much better utilization of our, of our basically spectrum uh, availability. Now, this requires some changes, obviously. It requires to us to redesign our radio. Actually, it becomes a sensor, because it has a sensor on it, and then it basically does some processing, some optimization, and actually then it adapts. So it, it senses the spectrum. That is correct. So it has sensors and adaptation to it. So it did becomes a flexible entity, what we call a software definable radio. Again, enabled by some technology advances of today. So that's step number one, more effective usage of spectrum. The second one is what I call collaborative radio. The idea of collaborative radio is that, uh, if I can get this to move forward, there we go. Um, in this room you have, uh, everybody has a, a cell phone with you, right? Every one of you has one. Now suppose that the tower goes out, right now, all of you lose connectivity, even though all of you have a radio sitting there. Isn't that sad? What happens today is that wireless radios don't work together. Actually, they fight each other. If you look at the i7 band and things like that, they're basically Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, they all fight each other. Now, if I could make radios work together, you could become a lot more effective. Rather than basically from me hopping right away to this tower out there, which is a couple of miles away, I could hop to your sensor, to your radio, and you can hop to the next one and so on and so forth. And if you do so, you can actually prove that the system gets more efficient, you get more capacity, and you save energy. So, what's to lose? Yeah, it sounds like a perfect world. Absolutely. So there's some work to be done to make it happen, and you have to rethink some of the ideas, but this is something which is a very powerful... Right now, is, is the government supporting these novel uses of spectrum? Well, those things are not going to happen immediately. Now, obviously, things are not going to change overnight. Uh, but it's happening, slowly but surely. The FCC is actually looking very actively at some experiments in this space, in cognitive radio, collaborative radio, and so on and so forth. So this is something that's progress. It's going to take time. And also, I see the big companies, you talk about the Nokia's of the world, the Qualcomm's of the world, they're all looking very actively at this set of ideas. Fantastic. Well, it's an incredible vision. Pleasure. I hope we see it in the not-too-distant future. Thanks for being here, Jan.